Okay, great. So I want to introduce my panelists. As I said, um, this is a topic that has been addressed from a different angle. We've always talked about forgiving people who've wronged us, forgiving guys who've hurt us badly, people who've bruised us and all that. But we've never really talked about forgiving self, the importance of forgiving yourself, you know. You can forgive everybody else, but if you don't forgive yourself, there's an unfinished business. And today I'm here with my panelists, great people who've gone through this, they've experienced it, they've had their own struggles with it, but they came out and they're here to tell us their story. So next to me, I have Dr. Beatrice um, Burugo. I am glad I said it correctly. She's a counseling psychologist and she's also a senior lecturer at Chuka University. We're glad to have you. Next, we have Dr. Susan Gitao. She's also a counseling psychologist and a lecturer at African Nazarene. Thank you so much for coming, Dr. Susan. Thank you, thank you. And next, we have the lovely Rosina Mwakideo. We're so excited to have you. Thank you. <laughs> Rosina Mwakideo, she's a recording and performing artist, and she's also an entrepreneur, and she's here with us. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much for coming. Thank all you. of you, we appreciate all of you. So we're going to talk about um, this, this elephant in the room. You know, self-forgiveness. The Bible actually addresses it and says, there's therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And one of the things he does is to inflict guilt in our lives. Mm -hmm. And for all of us, we've been through this and we have had in our, ex our experiences. So maybe for you, Dr. Beatrice, mm -hmm. tell us your experience briefly before we get to how to forgive. Yes, uh, uh, my name, as you've said, is Dr. Beatrice Burugo, yeah. uh, born again. Mm -hmm. And uh, the virtue of forgiveness, or actually coming to, to, to in terms with myself, yes. it starts with the self, and then you are able to forgive others. That is pardoning their sins. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as a Christian, uh, I I learned that you cannot be a good Christian if you don't forgive, or you start forgiving yourself first of all. Mm -hmm. So, as a lecturer, even where I work. And uh, even dealing with people as a counseling psychologist, I really value forgiveness. Mm -hmm. That is pardoning the wrongdoings of others. But then I know it should start with self, Yourself. so that I'm able to forgive others. Mm -hmm. Yes. Have you had experiences with unforgiveness? Have you dealt with it before in your own life? Yes. At times, people have wronged me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found it hard to forgive because I may forgive, but you wait for people to ask uh, for confession. If they confess first their, mm. whatever they did wrong to you, and then at one point it, is, it becomes very hard. Mm. But the minute I got to know about Christ Jesus and uh, his forgiveness for all human, humanity, mm. I am able to deal with it. The is issue of forgetting now becomes an issue, but uh, as a counseling psychologist, again, I know that if you keep a grudge, mm. If you keep on grudge, it becomes a burden. Mm. So you forgive and forget and learn to live with others. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then I start first forgiving. What did I do? Mm. I point a finger at myself. What did I do first? Mm -hmm. I deal with my issues first, and then I'm able now to see the other person. Okay. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you so much, Petrus. We'll be coming back, uh, approaching it from a counseling angle because it's important, as you said. Yes. In, unless you let go, then it becomes a grudge and a wonder for that matter. Mm -hmm. Dr. Uh, Gitao, for you, you've had an experience as well. Would you mm -hmm. want to share about that? Not even one. For me, I've had many experiences. Okay. And one thing I thank God for, um, I'm able to let go and move on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there are two very critical incidences I've had in my life of uh, betrayal. Betrayal by people I really trusted, mm -hmm. that we worked together. Uh, we worked together and served the country together. Mm -hmm. So I did not imagine them sitting down and making a judgment against me. At first I thought it was a big dream. <laughs> uh, I, I thank God because soon after I left the country, so I was able to relax outside there. Yeah. I couldn't believe. Yeah. Today I'm also a single parent because somebody betrayed me and let me down. Mm. I, I have stood up. And uh, what comes with single parenthood, I have swallowed it. Mm. It's actually a bitter pill. <laughs> because even in my field as a mm. counseling psychologist and the working in an African context, there are people who don't take you. But I do take myself and uh, believe in the Bible that um, if you serve God, there is nothing like gender in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. We are all equal before the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. And what he gives you to serve people with, mm -hmm. he gives you. Okay. So those two incidences for me, they are 
quite quite significant. Mm. I think it took me very many years because my son now is 20 years. Oh, great. Yeah, mm -hmm. he is a third year at the university where I work. Okay. And um, I, I, I had to teach him from a very tender age mm. how to also let go and forgive. Mm. And I thank God because I see it. Okay. Uh, it wasn't easy yeah. because uh, what happens when, when you're left with a child, uh, you have to make very tough choices. Mm. However Hello. beautiful, however, mm. <laughs> however resourceful you are, mm. you have to always choose between your child mm. and that other life. Yeah. And so I chose to be with my son. Okay. Yet if I were asked, if I was to turn back the clock, mm. uh, that's not the way I would have loved things to turn out. Yeah. But I have forgiven the father. Mm. We actually talk especially with uh, two of his sisters because I want my son to identify with his family. Mm. I want him to know his step yeah. <laughs> brothers I mean, and yeah. sister uh, because uh, reality can't change. Mm. Mm. And I, I trust God. I also want him to know right now I have really mm. nothing against him because mm. I wouldn't like him to feel bad to reach out to his son. Yeah. This and, is the uh, father. This mm. is the father. Mm. And even the wife, I would like her to know that's a family that she has and it's what God gave her. Mm. So she shouldn't even come between my son and the father if they want to talk. Mm. And this uh, is a conversation I believe you've had over and over again for you to be able to get to that place. Oh yes, I went for counseling. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Many important. Sessions. I okay. think I was in denial for the first five years. Okay. You can't believe that. that and it's long. great because you talk about denial and betrayal. You've brought in very significant yeah, things. Yes, and yeah. maybe I can just uh, pose you for now before yes. we move on to the next thing. And then we ask Rosina, her experience, because Rosina, you've had an experience as well. Probably yes. um, you could share. Yeah, sure. I could, I could share. But before we go to the experience that you probably are talking about, yeah. um, I think I would want to address uh, some things that I think lead us to make choices in life later on mm -hmm. because we have not forgiven ourselves. Yes. And most of the time, as I think the unforgiven that many adults harbor, it's because of their childhood experiences. And so they grow up with not forgiving themselves or with not forgiving people, mm -hmm. and then they now start hurting other people. And then now, uh, you know, because you haven't even forgiven yourself first from being a child, and what happened to you? Now you start hurting other people, yeah. and then it just, it spirals. It becomes like a spiral. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for me, I've had many experiences, okay. I would say. Um, and one of them, I would say, what led me to my letter on, even to coming to now, knowing that I need to forgive myself, is being a child and being under, like many other people have been molested, you know, as growing up and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And going through things like that. You grow up having a, not, a, a, not quite a clear, uh, image of relationships, yes. of friendships. Identity of, as well. Exactly. Mm. And so you just end up doing things mm. blindly. Mm. And um, yeah, as many people would know, I, I think one of the things that I did when I was a grown up, I was in Christ, was getting married. Mm. And, uh, you know, it only lasted one year. I've never gone out in public to speak about it. I needed that time to heal. To heal fast. Um, to heal fast, yeah. to understand what happened, mm. what, what did I do, why mm. did I do it. Mm. And so in that one year when I was married, I, I realized, I say married, quote unquote, mm. um, because I, I honestly believe that it's true when God says what God puts together, mm. um, no man can put us under. And I've come to understand that we, when we say God, we separate love, yeah. but actually God is love. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when what love puts together, yeah. no man can put asunder. So um, I think sometimes we don't really know what love is. Mm -hmm. And so we get married, but we're getting married because we are hurt, because we are looking for that identity, yeah. because we want something to, to, to feel own, to feel, to a lot of other things, mm -hmm. but not love. Okay. And then when it goes asunder, we say, how did that happen? Mm. But it wasn't brought together by love. God it was not going there. to hold. Mm. Only love never fails. Mm. So yeah, so I had to forgive myself. I had to forgive um, Robert Israel <laughs> Borale, whatever he is. <laughs> he probably is listening yeah. or he might. But yes, I had to do that. Mm. And for me to do that, I'm not a very public person. Mm. I had to go into a hiding. I had to cry. And I remember one, one day that I, I actually felt a breakthrough in the forgiving coming mm. is because um, I always say people will cry. Mm. 
and, 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 and everybody probably has cried, but it matters how you cry. Because mm -hmm. I cried and cried, but then when I cried to God, I cried out to God, I told God, you know what? I'm not going to be able to forgive this guy. I can't do it by myself. Yes, it's not going to happen. Mm. So unless you give me that forgiveness, yes. unless you put it in my heart so that I can extend it. Yes. Because the same way when we have a heart in our hearts, we extend it out. Mm. Mm. Everything that we are, you know, if we're broken, we just throw out broken pieces to others mm. and hurt them. That's true. So, yeah, so then I forgive myself. And I realized that even it was not his fault. Mm. And it was not my fault. Mm. We were just bought two people that are blinded by mm. something. Mm -hmm. There was something in there. Yeah. And maybe if we can re can address it, Dr. Beatrice, there's, yes. a, there's an aspect of betrayal, and we've seen it. Yes. And you've talked about something very important, the heart and the pain of yeah. growing up, or yeah. probably abuse, you yeah. know, people who've been molested, abused, yeah. raped, mm -hmm. and they stay in self um condemnation they're like mm. I did something probably like what you said probably yeah. I did something to yeah. deserve it I took mm. myself there you know mm. what mm. would you say about uh, you know addressing the aspect of you know not self blaming but actually releasing yourself to forgiveness thank you so much Grace mm. uh, I think uh, one thing that can make somebody live in condemnation yeah. is when you feel that the person who hurt you you're not ready to let it go and mm. like my sister is saying Mm. Our God is full of love. And That's when you true. cry to God, he listens to you and he speaks to the inner man and mm. then you are able to now extend. Sometimes it's very hurting. I have remembered that she was sharing. Yeah. Mine is a family issue. Yeah. And I've brought up my sisters and my brother have taken all my resources to them. Yeah. And at one point it reaches a time and they, they now turn against me. Mm. It was, it's really hurting, that kind of betrayal. So you really don't need to live in condemnation. At first you feel like you're condemning yourself. Did I mm. do anything wrong to them? But then I remember that I have a maker. I it's have true. a God who forgives. And I remember the many times he forgave the Israelites. Mm. And so uh, even before getting into the counseling issue, we just surrender everything to God. Mm. And then that set of condemnation, because the Bible says there is no condemnation. There is no. There is no condemnation, and therefore you don't need to live in that condemnation. It keeps on hurting you. Mm. And it's like actually in counseling we say, if you have a grudge to answer somebody, mm -hmm. it is like using calories one day in the chamber, digging. And that is the kind of burden you carry. So yes. the, the minute you let it go, you feel your heart is okay, and you're able to now listen. Mm. And you're able to work out with people, the community that rejected you, the family that rejected you, the person that rejected you, mm. you are able to accommodate them and to release them and it goes. Yes. And then you are able to move on with life. That's great. That's so the take. biblical angle is you're actually reading and uh, understanding what scripture says about, about you. That, like you said, there's yeah. therefore now no condemnation. The Bible yes. says we've been forgiven of our yeah. sins. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is the spiritual angle but let's look at it from a counseling angle you talked about finding help looking for counseling going out there and finding somebody to talk to to also mm -hmm. address particular issues what would you say are some of the processes in forgiving mm -hmm. self after or through seeking mm -hmm. help mm -hmm. so it's, it's it's very important for people to know even when you hold a, a grudge thinking other people wronged you, mm. you're also wronging yourself. That's true. Sure. Uh, because if I take my process before I did counseling, mm. I was a high school teacher. I, I remember I could talk about that story over and over again. Mm. Now I know because I'm a trauma expert that yeah. it was not only a loss that left me very bitter and resentful, mm -hmm. but it also traumatized me. It's true. Probably mm. because I had uh, that. Uh, B that big dream of mm. a Family. white wedding. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because I was my dad's favorite. I was the best girl in, uh, in the family. And so uh, I, I remember very, very well that uh, the process I went through is similar mm. to the one of losing mm. someone, mm. even through death and all that, yeah. or mm. losing a precious object. Yes. And the process is the same. Sure. Uh, there are several stages, but there are stages that I like using to explain this. Mm. The first one is that denial. It can't be true. Mm. I, I remember even when I gave birth, I said, call him. Ask him what we need to call this baby. Oh. <laughs> I think I was you still, still wanted denial. him to be part of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't think I was aware. I was still yeah. in denial yeah. because uh, he left probably three months down the line, you know? Yeah. So I also went through the... Um, the, the 
the anger stage. Mm. I was so angry at myself. Yeah. Because even the way I got pregnant is, is a situation up to date, I like saying. It's not anything I would wish anybody to go through. Okay. But I knew him for a long, long time. Yeah. So it was like, I'm okay yeah. to live with him. But yeah. this is not the way I wanted things to go. Okay. It's a story for another day. Mm -hmm. So I was very angry mm -hmm. with myself. Even with God, I was saying, God, how could I have It's good you brought him? that out. Yeah. yeah. It's good you brought that out because God. anger with God is also yes, something yeah. you need to And I was, saying, I was saying, God, where were you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know how I've struggled in mm -hmm. my life? Mm -hmm because I really worked so hard to be who mm -hmm. I am today mm -hmm. and who I was then. So I was angry at God, angry at myself, angry at my family, yeah. especially my mother, because Maybe I was Maybe because you felt you let them down? Uh, yes, I think my mother also got traumatized because she didn't even come to the hospital oh. when I gave birth. And she was saying none of her children have given birth the way I did. It was a very, very tough delivery for me. Okay. We almost died with my son. Mm. So I was thinking my mother is also cursing me yeah. for probably being a, a shame to the family. Yeah. And I went through the bargaining stage. Yeah. There's also bargaining. Oh God, can yeah. you remove this shame yeah. and bring back my, yeah. my husband, <laughs> <laughs> the father to my son. But it didn't happen. Yeah. You know, that's bargaining. Yeah. And I think I bargained for three years. Wow. Bargaining thinking maybe something's gonna happen. Yeah. He might come back to his senses and maybe come and talk to me. Mm. To date, 20 years down the line, he has never explained to me what happened. Mm. I, I also went into some depression. Okay. But I thank God, when I went into that depression stage, is where I met Christ. Amen. Mm. And I believe Christ lives. Mm. Mm. Because when I read about the truth, even mm. in life, mm. and about Colossians 1.16, yeah. yeah. that I'm here mm. because God has created me. Yeah. Mm. So it's not about me. Yeah. It's about God. Mm -hmm. I think I got big liberation. Amen. And when you also read John 10, 11, because mm. we, we, we like reading John 10, 10. Mm. Yes, John 10, 10 is there. Mm. But George, uh, John 10, 11 is about Christ, the good shepherd. Yes. So I said, surely, I was thinking somebody has good shepherd me. Yeah. You know the childhood yeah. Um, yeah. kind of needs yeah. that you carry along with yeah. you? Mm -hmm. You want somebody to take care of you? Mm. It's all wrong. But God is the only faithful, yeah. faithful. Mm. And mm. Christ is the only good shepherd Amen. that will never let you down. Amen. And I haven't been let down by Christ. Amen. Believe you me, I would rather live for Christ other than live for anybody else. It's mm. a realization you come Completely. to. Completely. Yes. But okay. it's after going into depression. Mm. The next stage is definitely. Mm. If you get out, it's acceptance. Acceptance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's the final stage. This is it. Mm. Yeah. And mm. acceptance, to get there, is the best place to be. Mm. And that is where now, when we talk about forgiveness mm. and letting go, people mm. are not able to let go. Mm. They say, I have accepted, but you haven't let go. But what mm. is letting go? You may remember it, but you don't remember it with pain. Pain and or anger. Mm. Okay. Mm. I love the fact that you brought out the stages and we'll be reiterating on them as we uh, conclude. But for now, Mo has some feedback for us before we get to Rosina. Yes. Mo, you have some feedback? Yeah, I told you, I told you we'll be doing uh, this uh, with guys from home now. Let's do this. The uh, men are active now. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> uh, of course, the men are still Jen is me. And I said, my department is looking great. I'm learning how to forgive and grow. Uh, and growing to forgive. Mm -hmm. Asan Sana, uh, we have another one, uh, br uh, brand you can trust, that's Trendmaster 001. Mm -hmm. Some changes are very difficult to make, uh, but always worth it, like forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Asan Sana, to konani mingine pale, yes, to konaremi, and I say my forgiveness is the most difficult thing. I think it's important to ask help from God. Enjoying the show, Asan Sana, Bimbio, love to konani mingine apo, we have Jesse Ondoro, I big up yourself, and I say my, it's always important to ask for help. Forgiveness is always not easy, even to own self. Mm. Asante sana, tunawana pale Jesse Ondoro. Eh, wanaume, tuwamukia ni hivo hivo kabisa, kuna hope. Yes, <laughs> wanaito kuna hope. And asema, it's always important not to be too hard on yourself when it comes to forgiving yourself. Asante sana, hashtag prosovo one one kama kawaida. Zingine katha, um, Kenya marketers, I see you. And asema, God is love. Uh, the forgiveness topic is uh, pretty much a good topic. I love it and I'm learning. Asan sana, Kenya marketers, to marketini kabisa kama Kenya. The great, uh, locked it's a great show, hashtag cross of 101. Asanti, tukona ingine hapo, arakaraka, grisa kirapa, naona pali na pali. Loto nakapo sana, I love to some here, uh, uh, Brian, and asema forgiveness, the start of recovery, uh, to purpose uh, your destiny. Asanti sana, uh, thank you guys for that feedback, keep them coming. I love to kwa pa juyenu, so Grace, mm -hmm. tuna tukimalizia tujue itakuwa pipe.
you know, some very interesting words have come through, have come out through the conversation. There's mm. the aspect of betrayal, there's, there's uh, abuse, there's resentment, there's anger, there's trauma, there's not letting go, and there's the aspect of condemnation as well. And this is some of the negative things that we go through when we're going through um, unforgiveness. But there's the stages that we've been told you need to go through, and this is one denial you, where you, you're saying, no, it's not happening, anger when you're you know, upset, and then there's bargaining, asking God to change the situation, and then there's depression. And now acceptance but for now let's look at when do you know you have forgiven Rosina because you've gone through it I believe you went through the process you went yes. through all those things yes. heart and, and trauma yes. but now how do you know I have completely forgiven uh, when like f what what she said first when you can talk about it and not yeah. remember it the as heart, being painful yes. and when you can actually talk even to that person mm -hmm. okay. and not feel that pain when you can, like, I remember, I think I uh, recently actually talked to Robert and we were just discussing about, you know, let's put things in fact. I remember I told him very clearly, I, I asked him, you know what, every time you go on social media, because he's been very public about it, and you post when it's the date of when we got married, yeah. I'm, I'm in this thing. And yeah. actually, I want to move on yeah. because people do screenshots, people call me, people inbox me, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And I told him, it's been five years. Yes. I have moved on. But every time this thing comes back, it's like you remind me in that way. Let's just all move on gracefully. Mm -hmm. And so when you can talk to someone differently, uh, and even be open to understand that they also have their own issues yeah. and that you, you pray for them even to, to also be at the place where you are in and you're genuinely praying for them, not, not like just saying not words, malicious, yeah. not maliciously, yeah. but you know, you like, um, you know, you know that both of you were in this thing or if it's a family or whatever, even if it's someone who abused you, mm -hmm. you can actually have compassion for them. For them yeah. Because when Jesus was on the cross, mm -hmm. He could have just been angry and bitter. He said, forgive them, mm -hmm. for they actually do not know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And most people do not know what they're doing, even when they're hurting people. They are hurting themselves as they're hurting people. So when you're at that place where the acceptance place, you're ready even, you realize that um, if it didn't work out with this, it can still work out. I can do it again. Yeah. You know, you don't have any baggage. Yeah. When you don't have any baggage at all, you don't hate men or women, you don't hate marriages or children, <laughs> you just don't have any baggage at all. Mm. You don't have, you don't hate a certain profession, like you've, you've gotten over it yes. and you've understood that it was all about you. It wasn't the person, it wasn't the career, it wasn't the child, it wasn't anything. Mm. It was just a process that you had to go through. Okay. Then you know you're you know, you know you've healed. Mm. You know that Christ has finished that work uh, in, in your heart, in your yes. soul. He has finished it, okay. and you're ready. Okay. Yes. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I believe we've we've had a good coverage of this topic. Mm -hmm. If we have any questions, we're going to direct them to them and probably have you back again. But thank you so much for sharing your experiences. And what has come out so strong is that it's important to go through the process. Yes. Because if you skip one process, then you might not be able to go through right. and you know move on. Yeah. And thank you so much, Rosina, for yeah. sharing as well. And, and I think that the thing that we need to, to also address is uh, forgiveness or any kind of a process. Mm -hmm. Someone has to be like genuinely deeply honest and sincere with themselves. With themselves. You just That's have to true. lay it bare. As mm. bad as it looks, mm -hmm. as dirty, as ugly, if it has horns, you just have to face it. Yes. And, and then that's when now you start healing okay. and not hiding behind it. Okay. Yeah. And remember, God has also forgiven you. As we said earlier, as oh, far yes. as the east is from the west, that's how far God has forgiven and oh, taken yes. away our sins. He doesn't actually remember. We are the ones who keep reminding him, yeah. God, you know, 2015, I did this. <laughs> like, what? I don't remember what you did. That's how uh, forgiveness is. And I think it's for us to also go through the process and understand that the love of God never fails. Yes. And when he says he has forgiven, he, he has. has forgiven. God has risen his word above his name. Thank you so much again for the for the conversation i loved it i loved it and i hope the guys at home loved